Hey everybody, it is Cami here. Welcome to day one of the self-love challenge. Today is all about setting up the rules, the guidelines, and just jumping in to why self-love and why now. So first things I wanna go over are going to be the rules. And I will tell you this, I just decided to launch this yesterday. So I know a lot of you guys will be watching the replay. So when you watch the replay, you will need to engage by commenting hashtag replay. And I'm actually borrowing a lot of these strategies from a mentor, Jen Scalia, who I just went through a phenomenal challenge with her this week. And I am borrowing her concepts because it was so fun. It was so engaging to go through her challenge and she gave great, great value. So in order to engage, as you hop on, say hello so that I can see that you're here. And what this is also going to do is it's going to bump this video, giving other people notifications, letting them know that I'm live. Because I just launched this last night, because I just sent the email out, um, and because I know a lot of people are just hopping in today as a result of a talk I gave, make sure as you're hopping on, you are commenting. Okay. Hey, Tara. So I know Tara knows what she's doing because she is involved in Jen Scalia's challenge right now too. And I saw her doing her due diligence over there. So welcome, Tara. I'm glad you are here. Um, so I want to just jump into why self-love and why this is so important um, from a business mindset and then also just from a boundaries and a values and relationship mindset. So again, my name is Cammie. I am a life coach, a mindset and life coach. I work primarily with recovering perfectionists in the areas of health, wealth, and love. Now, the reason I chose those areas is because I was a health and fitness coach for about seven years, and I kept coaching women on nutrition and on fitness and on staying motivated and all these things. And what we never attached or never talked about were deeply were, you know, the relationship with their boss and why that triggered them to eat. Um, their husband, you know, they weren't in a happy marriage or there was some infidelity somewhere, um, healing those wounds. And then the other thing, money has a lot to do with love as well and self-worth. So I'm going to share today some stories that you may not know about me if this is the first time you've seen me speak or we've connected at one of the local events um, in the past month. But I was in a nine year relationship from the age of 24 to the age of 33, I believe. Um, and I was with a covert narcissist. So I know the word narcissist gets thrown around all the time, but basically some tendencies of a narcissist is to do things like gaslighting. Um, they're really all about themselves and gaslighting is making you start to feel like you're crazy. And so when I got involved with this guy, I got involved with him young and he was very attractive. He was in the military with special forces. He had the nice house, the nice car. He was really fit. And Hey guys, welcome Aubrey, Shannon, as you guys are hopping on, make sure you comment because I will, I'm telling a story right now, but I will be going over the rules um, of engagement in order to win prizes today. Um, but back to my story. So I was really insecure at that age, even though looking back, I was like, I was so fit. I was gorgeous. You know, it's interesting how we look back on ourselves. Right. And so, and we do that a lot of times if we've gained weight and we like look back and we're like, Oh, I thought I was fat then and now I've gained weight. So this is going to be a perspective shift in so many areas, but I was in that relationship for so long because I put my sense of worthiness in him and what he said. And clearly I was very um, prone to being able to be manipulated by him. And it took me some time to forgive myself for giving away nine years of my life. But I also know that there is a reason and I did learn and about four years, about halfway into our relationship, I got into network marketing. Um, I was fired from my job, got into network marketing, and I also started my health and fitness business coaching, right? And this was like the beginning of the end for us. Obviously, it had not been going well. And just to give you an idea, in that entire time of nine years, he never said, I love you. Like, if that's not a red flag, I don't know what is, right? And I got into my network marketing business. He started to just talk down to me and say it wasn't going to work. And why did I think that, that I was going to be any different or, you know, better than other, all the other coaches out there. And 
he basically just reinforced all the limiting beliefs that I already had about myself and just made me doubt myself even more. So my dog here and here is whining in the background. I'm sure you guys know what it's like to have pets. So I'm just going to let you know he's back there if you hear them barking. Um, so he really began to talk down to me about my business. But before that, he had talked down to me about my body and he'd be like, you could lose eight pounds. I was actually fitness in three or four magazines. I was fitness. I was I was a fitness model in Oxygen magazine in an ad. Uh, Muscle and Fitness hers. I was on Shape.com. Um, then I was in Train for Her magazine. And when I got published, the pic picture that they used was from this photographer that I worked with, really well known, Noel Deganta, out in LA. And I got published, and it was from a couple years prior, right? Like when I was more into to fitness com competing. And the first thing he said was, well, like, how do you feel now? Cause like, you don't look like that anymore. Right. Like basically just saying, yeah, whatever you, screw you because you gained weight. Right. So he basically always said those things no matter what. And I had hired, started hiring business coaches in 2015. I was in two masterminds. Um, I had one-on-one -on -one coaches and then I finally hired a relationship coach in the end of 2017 which is a period that I call rying out. I actually got a t-shirt made, which maybe I'll, maybe I'll reintroduce those t-shirts and give that, maybe I'll give that away as one of the prizes. Um, so rying out to me is when you get to a point in your life where you feel like something needs to change and you're, you're, you're completely surrendered just to like, okay, okay, I'm like done, like something's changing. So that was the time I was stepping down from a job. I was kind of working part time doing my fitness business. And I was like, something needs to change. So I hired that relationship coach. She coached me through a 30 day period of setting my values of setting my intentions and to really owning that it was okay to speak up for what I needed and what I wanted. And I had not done that for years because every time I would try to say to him, hey, this is what I need or this is what I expect, he would somehow turn it around on me and make it seem like I was crazy. So I went through this period working with her, finally broke it off with him in March 2018. And it actually, the best I could do was like saying, hey, we need to take a six month break because that's really all like I was so, he had his hook so deep in me that all I could do was like, you know what? Maybe he'll change, right? Maybe after nine years, he'll change. Maybe he'll find spirituality in God and just, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be aligned. All that to say, we were not together. And he did try to come back and get with me. Um, and I, I moved on and moved past it. Um, and Tara says, narcissists are horrible people. I've been there, done that three times. I've been stubborn, but now finally awake and aware. Yes, Tara, and I know. I think more people are starting to speak up about it now. Um, and make it aware and making it okay, meaning we don't need to have shame as a victim or even calling ourselves a codependent. It's just having the awareness of what relationships in our past, typically with our parents or somebody in an authority figure in our childhood, created that dynamic for us. And then it's for us to now heal it, right? So thank you for participating. Anybody else who is on live for you to be eligible for these prizes, make sure as you pop on, say hello, say hi, um, so that I can see your comments so that I know you're reviewing this live because I am giving away a really good prize at the end. Um, I'm going to give you a sneak peek. So keep watching. I'm going to give you a sneak peek um, in a little bit here. But the whole purpose behind this challenge is where do we start with self-love? Why is it so important? And I shared this with a talk that I gave today. I gave a talk with a bunch of women business owners. It was phenomenal at the Women's Business Center here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And my topic to them and the, the takeaway that I wanted them to really have was the reason we don't do the things, the actions that we need to take in our business or in our life, whether that's communicating our values to someone or even self-care in the form of fitness or in health, anything that is our goal, the reason that we don't do the things to get us there is because something inside of us believes that we are actually unworthy of the outcome that would come from the other side. So I want you to just let that sit for a while and start to understand that because I did have a fitness business. I ended up shutting it down. Um, and the reason why 
number one, I wasn't really aligned with what I was doing because I knew there was other ways I could help people and really work on their mindset to have breakthroughs. But the other reason why was because I always said I wanted this certain level of success, but because of that programming through my parents, through family, saying money doesn't grow on trees, saying being an entrepreneur is hard, and then through that long relationship telling me I couldn't do it, I basically, in my heart, gave up and was like, yeah, no, I can't really do it. So I didn't show up. I didn't do the things that would create a successful business, right? All the things that they tell us, show up consistently, get out there and market, ask for the sale, all those things. I would do them, but I would half-ass do them, right? And that's something that a lot of times perfectionists or recovering perfectionists do, is that we will do it in a half-ass way or we'll procrastinate till the very last minute or we just won't do it at all and then we wonder why it doesn't work out. So as we're moving through this progress, I want you to start thinking of and jotting down some things in your life that are what you would call like a monkey on your back. This is something Susan Sly, one of my mentor uses of like, what takes up your energy? Um, one of my coaches, Emil Steenfeld calls it the loop list. Like what open loops do you have in your life? And the weird thing is, is you wouldn't think that this is a self-love thing, but I'll tell you, I'll give you another example from my story. Um, when I was investing in myself after the breakup, I raised money to go to Costa Rica on a mission trip, had a beautiful experience there. And then I applied for a retreat in Bali that was $4,000 and I didn't have $4,000 at the time. But when I said yes to myself, energetically, that was me telling God, the universe, like, She's ready. Let's do this. And I was able to manifest that $4,000. So some of that was through, you know, reaching out, getting new clients, but some of that was through closing loops. And some of that was through manifesting it through other people. So I'll give you a couple examples. I don't remember how many clients I sold, but I probably sold maybe two clients and that would have been about two grand. So that was half of it. And then my mom, I had told her, you know, Hey, I'm going to Bali. And she goes, Oh my gosh, I just remembered you have bonds from you when you were a baby. Like, I guess it was cool when we were a baby in the nineties to give um, bonds as gifts for Christmas. And so she had had all those bonds sitting in her safety box and it was a thousand dollars. The other thing that I was putting off, so this is what comes back to your loop list. The other thing that I was putting off was I had, my dog had just passed away that year. I forgot. Oh my gosh. My dog, my, uh, my beautiful dog passed away that year. I had to put her down the day before my birthday um, because she was just senile and her hips weren't working and she was just miserable. And it was hard for me to deal with it emotionally. Right. And so I had had insurance papers on her and I think for four years I had insurance on her and I just kept like paying the vet, but I never submitted any of my insurance claims. So I went and took a stack of all of her vet bills for the past three or four years, which was, I think what about $4,000, three or $4,000. I submitted them all and I ended up getting just about $900 back. So you can see right there, I generated $2,000. I think I ended up creating $4,000 in 10 days that had never been done before. And it started with, my willingness. So the first thing is my willingness to say yes to myself. And I'm taking notes on this because sometimes, um, sometimes I just say good things. So I write it down. So I remember for the email. Um, so I say yes to myself by showing up. So that's like you saying yes to this challenge or you saying yes to, I'm going to watch the replay or I'm going to do the work. I'm going to show up. And then the second thing was I did something. I took an action from my loop list that really felt shitty, right? It didn't feel good. I was trying to avoid it. But the more we try to avoid it, it drains this energy from us to where it's always operating in the back of our head. We're always thinking about it. And as soon as we make that breakthrough, what happens is energy starts to flow to us, relationships starts to flow to us, money starts to flow to us. We feel lighter when we start to take those actions. So the first piece of this is saying yes to yourself, so showing up. The second piece is doing one thing from your loop list. And this is gonna be actually one thing daily for the next five days. But I want you to comment right now, I see there are two people live, I think one of them's Tara, I can't tell who the per other person is. But I want you to comment right now on what 
is one of those big things that if you completed it, that it would take a lot of that energetic drain away from you. And I'm going to share another one of mine. So last year in my fitness business, I did not do a great job at setting aside that 25% taxes, right? That you're supposed to set aside and pay quarterly, right? So uh, by the end of the year, I was submitting my taxes and I ended up owing $1,700 to the federal government and um, maybe like $1,200 to the state of North Carolina, I think. Um, and that for me was kind of like a big monkey on my back, like, cause the federal government doesn't mess, right? Like they'll start garnishing your wages. They'll start coming after you and they'll start doing lawsuits. So I had pushed it back 90 days. I pushed it back to December 19th and I just said, okay, I am going to set that money aside and I will have that $1,700 to pay off. So I tell you, I paid off that, and I don't remember the date that I paid it off, but I paid off that money and I felt finally like free from the IRS. Like, oh my gosh, yes, I did it. Number one, it built, it built self-trust for me because I did what I said I was going to do, whereas I could have continued to feel shame and guilt about not paying the taxes correctly and then having to have this consequence. But I showed up, I put the plan in action, and then I paid it. So it built that self-trust in me and then it also freed up all this energy and space related to my relationship with money, right? It also cleared up opportunity for me to have financial conversations with my boyfriend and show him that I'm responsible. So it built up a lot of level of trust for me. So if you can do something related to money, that's gonna be very powerful, but also if it's a conversation that needs to be had. If it's, you know, I work with a lot of clients that, because they are people pleasers or perfectionists and they, they really do have a heart for people, but sometimes they say yes to too many things, there may be something that needs to purge from your life, like a volunteer role, like being head of a committee that you're not getting paid for. Something that energetically is draining you, maybe for a short time it was right. Sorry, my pillow fell and I got to be comfy. Look at this. Um, maybe for a short time it was right, but but maybe in your heart you know you need to move on from that. So these may be big things like leaving a job or a volunteer role. They may be big things like paying a big bill. They may just be looking at your credit card debt. And I bring this up because this was a point of shame for me for several years because I got fired from my job in 2015. I embarked on my entrepreneurial journey in 2015, same year. And over the period of about three years, three and a half, four years, I had invested uh, over $14,000 in personal development, personal growth, coaches, travel, all of these things to grow myself, but all of those went on credit cards. So do I regret it? I actually don't because these stories, uh, this is what grew me. And I also believe in this moment, this is what is going to help my story with other people. Now, do I recommend you do that and put $14,000 on a credit card? No, I don't. But you can understand, I'm just saying this because I know what it's like to have those feelings. And not to mention, I already have student loans that have been hanging around for over 10 years. So the problem here with the debt is that a lot of times we equate, equate that with our self-worth and how much we have, and a lot of times we want to ignore it. So maybe for you, it's just owning it and sharing it with your significant other. I did that when we first started dating and I said, hey, I have $30,000 combination between credit cards and student loans. And what that did for me is it pulled off the shame of hiding that and it, it's, it's okay, right? Um, there's a lot of people out there that teach having debt is not good and blah, 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 and you're dumb. And I don't really subscribe to that because our energy is so important and how we think about things. So what is something on your loop list that you can cross off one each day. Okay. And this is just going to be something that you can start a list on and you can post the list in the group and just start to have the list because sometimes part of the problem is we don't have the list. So then every day we're thinking about the list, whatever, it would just be easier to have it up there and then choose one thing per day. Now, moving forward, I don't advise you to do one thing per day. This is just going to kind of get the ball rolling. I advise you to do more like one thing per week because 
it gets overwhelming to do one thing per day, especially if it's big things. But I want to get you some quick results, some momentum to have you start feeling good, feeling confident about yourself, starting to build more self-trust. So the first thing is just getting that loop list and planning to complete things this week, right? And setting a goal to attack one thing for each of these five days. They could be little, it could be like the laundry sitting beside me, or it could be big, but you wanna start with your biggest and at least set a plan and action about that, okay? And then the last one, so I'm just giving you basically three tasks. The first one was just saying yes to this, to showing up, right? So if you have not yet signed up for the email portion of this, make sure you do, because I'm gonna be sending all of the recaps and the emails and it is important that you have everything there. So you're in the emails, you're in the Facebook group, and then all of your posts will be done in the Facebook group. But also, you can do them outside of Facebook. I would love for you to do them on Instagram um, or on Facebook on whatever you're learning and sharing with your people as well. So the last thing is going to be recognizing what you do well. And I'm jotting this down. And this is something that I think we learn to do over time because we think that talking about ourselves or talking about our strengths or saying how great we are, we think that's a sign of being conceited, right? And we think people don't like people that are conceited. But I can tell you this, all of the coaches that I work with stand up and say, yes, I make a million dollars and I'm damn good at what I do. Isn't that who you'd want to work with? regardless, right? Like I wouldn't want to go to a mechanic that's like, well, like I'm pretty good with tires, but like, ah, you know, I, I could be better. I know another guy up the street who's better. Like you see how that's not going to work the same way if you're out on the dating scene or you're in a job interview, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm good, but like I do have a lot of weaknesses. No, let's start owning what's good about us and start owning and being confident with saying that and being okay. And then also inviting people in your group, in your inner circle, in this group, to start recognizing them and encouraging them to say the same things. Because you're going to notice our language is really important, which is why I want to get you started to think about language and recognize the language you're using. Most of the time, women want to get around bitch and complain. It's not nothing bad. That's literally who I was for 25 years of my life, right? And the reason why is because a few things. The biology of the brain really predisposes us to being attracted to things that are negative. And what I mean by attracted is our ego wants to protect us from the outside world, the big bad world that could kill us, right? When we were out in tribes and we didn't have protection in homes and all the modern technology that we do, we were out literally living off the lands in huts and whatnot, and we needed to be alert for anything that could possibly endanger us and kill us. I talked a lot today, so I'm starting to lose my voice. Mm. But the reason we connect on that is because that's what we used to connect on, right? Negativity. But also, it's because everybody just wants to be seen and heard, and everybody just wants to feel connected, right? Love and connection is a top human need which is why you see people trying to people please all over the internet, trying to put up the pretty pictures, trying to get the likes because they just want a sense of connection. And that's a very easy way to connect because at first we think that by downplaying how good our life is going or by highlighting our negatives, people will like us more because they're like, yeah, me too, blah, 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 right? We can all get in the, get in the pit together and complain together. So the next step is going to be recognizing what you're good at. Either make a post in here or make a post on your Facebook page, however you want to do it, but really embodying what you're good at, making a meme out of it if you want, and then starting to share that out in the world, share it with your partner, share it with somebody and just say, hey, I'm really good at these things. If you have a business, you can start talking about how you're good at these things. If you're just at home and you're a mom, you can say, I'm really good at these things, right? A lot of times we go into comparison mode, which we're going to get into later this week, but a lot of times we go into comparison and we feel like we're not good at anything because there's somebody else that's better than us. But guess what? Literally 100% guarantee that there's somebody out there that is better than you. So 
Yeah, there's going to be. There's Olympic athletes out there. There's other people that do better, right? But that's another reason to stay in your lane. Keep it positive. Start to notice your language. Start to shift your language. And it's all about just owning and recognizing what you're good at, what you like, who you are. And you can even reflect and journal on this. I actually did this with one of my clients before my nutrition clients when I was transitioning her into life coaching. Um, and you're probably going to see her in here too, actually. Um, I said, I told her, you know what, this is going to be a good tool for you. Sit down and write a hundred things that are good about you. And that's like a big list. That's a challenge. I will say that for sure. That's a challenge. But you can start to actually find those things that you overlook, whether it's a quality, like, hey, I have a great smile, or whether it's just intrinsic, like, hey, I'm really good at um, cleaning, right? That's just a natural thing to me, and I love it. Because guess what? It's not a natural thing for everybody. It's not a natural thing for me. So don't take for granted what comes naturally to you. It doesn't mean that it's less valuable. That's a blessing. And you may find a way to make a business out of it, make extra money, help somebody else, serve the community. Um, you may be able to trade someone. I mean, in finding people in this group, I've met so many people in groups doing coaching over the years that I've been able to, to talk with. I found a VA, a virtual assistant, that I was able to trade with. So never put it past, right? Like, hey, I'll clean your house if you cut my hair. You know, we used to be based off of that kind of barter system too. So I'm going to wrap this up because I've already been on here for about 30 minutes. I see a few people got to catch this live, but right now I have two people on here. I'm trying to see who's on. Can I see who's on? Um, all right. I haven't seen any comments coming through in a while. Oh, that's why. Cause I was, oh dang. Cause I wasn't paying attention. All right. Cause I was up at the top. Sorry. So I'm going to go Sarah, Sarah joined. Hey, okay, perfect. This is beautiful. Self-love for me is loving myself enough to realize I didn't see all these comments coming through. Yay, so I see Shannon on. Oh, what is the loop list that you're referring to, Tara? Um, ooh, Tara says decluttering my life. Lisa Templeton, hey Lisa, good to see you. So let me address the loop list uh, really quickly, Tara. Um, so the loop list, what I think of it is like an energetic loop that needs to be closed, shut off, thrown away, right? Like me having my taxes out there was always on the back of my mind. So as soon as I got my taxes done, energetically, that was not a thing anymore. So the loop list is just what are things that are draining my energy? Like right now, I actually just went downstairs because it's like preparing for the call. And again, I'm a, I'm a, what do you call it? I'm a student of my practice or I'm a teacher and a student. Yeah, I'm a teacher and a student. So I went down and one of my things that I always let pile up is bills and mail, right? And I actually had this like premonition today that there was going to be money in my mailbox. So I like went to my mailbox and there wasn't money, but I was like, huh, like interesting. Like something told me to go to my mailbox and get the mail. So I went and um, it was just bills and so I just ripped up like some of the, the junk mail and everything. But then I had several other stacks and I was like, maybe there's money in there. And so I actually approached it in the way that was kind of fun instead of letting it pile up. So the loop list is just things that are draining your energy that you know need to get done and how can you tackle the biggest thing that's gonna create the biggest breakthrough energetically or business-wise or relationship-wise? Like if there's just a conversation you know you've got to have, have it. If there's a boundary you know you need to set at work, have it. So Tara, let me know if that answered your question. Um, and then Tara said decluttering my life. And Tara, I'm gonna challenge you to get a little more specific. Um, and the reason why is because when I came back from Bali, um, the only thing I could think of was like, I wanna get rid of everything, I wanna start over. Like I sold my couch. And this couch, the reason I sold it is because it was symbolic. It was like a nice couch, loved it. It was my first, it was like $1,400 couch set. And it was symbolic of me having like my first real job, making good money and putting it, like being able to afford it, putting it on a credit card, paying it off. But it was also so attached to materialism and it was so attached to um, not using my money wisely. So I remember as soon as I got back from Bali, I needed to energetically purge and the biggest thing I knew that was going to create that breakthrough for me was letting go of that couch. And what I mean letting go is I think I ended up selling it for two seventy five dollars when I bought the whole thing for $1,400. And it just also proved a point to me that like life is not about a couch. Like it was just so interesting. And I would say that would be another breakthrough for me when I did that. Um, okay. So she said decluttering my life. And then Tara says, 
that's been so overwhelming for her, I just avoided it for years. As of 2020, I've been doing small things daily and I can see and feel the pro progress finally. Tara, that's awesome. I love that. And I think it's shifting from that all or nothing mentality of let me go all in. No, all in doesn't work, right? And I know a lot of coaches will say take massive action, but for me being a recovering perfectionist and for taking massive action and then being on the couch for several days, weeks, being depressed after I take massive action, I don't know that it's the best approach. I think sometimes taking massive action, like when I said yes to Bali, that changed my life. But guess what I also had after Bali? I had a regression of like, holy shit, now I don't have money because I spent it all and can I really do this, right? Um, so not saying it's bad, but since then, since the end of 2019 into 2020, I've just been like consistent, 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 and it's been easy. I've been gaining momentum with consistency. So I know exactly what you mean. Lisa says, hello. Good. I'm glad you're commenting. Mm. Thank you for reminding me about the hashtag, um, Tara. Tara says, if we post on social media, do you have a hashtag for this? Yes. Um, let me look it up real quick. <laughs> the reason I'm saying this is because I used it before and I just want to double check it. <laughs> I thought I know it, but I don't want to give you the wrong thing. All right, this is what we're doing. The hashtag is going to be i'm going to type it in the notes ck self love challenge make sure you put the ck in there because that's cammy kennedy right because if not it's going to go into like thousands and millions and millions and millions of um hashtags that i have to search through and i don't want to so it's ck self love challenge cool cool thank you for following along tara thank you for being such a good student tara i love it um Mm. Lisa says, I've been shamed for being a confident leader. Lisa, I'd love to hear from you in turning that around and owning that as a trait that is something that's valuable that you can create value from. Um, and remember, there is a Marianne Williamson quote, I'll, I'll put it in the group here, basically says, who are we not to shine our brightest? Because when we shine our brightest, we allow others to shine too. And the people who are offended by confident people are people who are not confident, right? So it just highlights their insecurity and it makes them feel insecure. <clears throat> so it's not about you. It's actually about them. But I love that you're bringing that up. <laughs> Tara says, I love bartering. Lisa says, great idea. Okay. Tara says, loop list, monkey on your back, basically. Yep. And you know what it is. That first thing you think of that you're like, oh, I don't want to. That's the one. Um, Lisa says, got to work on regaining confidence. Okay, Lisa, I like that. I like that you're setting a, a, an objective for this challenge. And I'm wondering, Lisa, I'm, I'm going to invite you to share a little bit more of your story. Um, and I'll tell you this, anybody who does a live video, either in the group or outside the group and uses the hashtag, if you do a live video of any sort and you have the hashtag CK self love challenge, you get five bonus points, and this is going to be for the grand prize, which is over a five hundred dollar value. I will I will let you guys know that grand prize closer to the end, but it will be highly valuable for you. And if you do a live video and you post self love challenge, you're going to get five bonus points, and whoever has the most points, participation wise, is going to be eligible to win that five hundred dollar prize. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to wrap it up. If you guys have any questions as we are going through this, um, pop them in here, but I love that you're commenting and I see, it looks like Lisa is on here live. It looks like Tara is on here live. I've got one more person on here live. I'm not sure if it's Shannon. Um, if it is Shannon. Okay. Shannon did comment. Okay. So I think we have three of you guys on here live, which is so great because you have a third, you have a 33% chance of winning this prize. So again, for anybody watching the replay, for you to be eligible for the daily prize, you have to be on live. So these three lucky ladies are on live. 
Yay, Tara says that's me 100%. Lisa says happy to do a video. Awesome, Lisa, I'm super excited to see you on video sharing your story, especially about confidence. Okay, so I think I have Lisa, Tara, and Shannon on. Shannon, if you're still on, make sure you're commenting here. So Tara knows this, if she's following along with Jen Scalia Challenge, I am borrowing this because it was so, so fun, which is why I wanna give her credit for this idea because she's a phenomenal coach. Um, she does a challenge does a giveaway based on commenting in the group. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, let me show what we, what we got. I don't have it live and in person, so I'm just gonna show you the picture, which is fine. I'm um, gonna go pick it up tomorrow. If you guys are local to Fayetteville, you probably know of the place downtown that's called Prest, and you may know that at Prest, they have just gotten in a whole bunch of crystals. So if you want to follow them on Instagram, you can follow them at New Moon NC. I'm actually gonna tag them down here. The prize is from New Moon NC on Instagram, and it looks like they're on Facebook too. <clears throat> the prize is from New Moon NC, and she has gifted us a chakra set. So I'm gonna start to see if you can see this. So it is an entire set of crystals, also with a smudging stick of sage. And if you guys are not familiar with this, I know Shannon is familiar with this for sure. Tara, I'm not sure if you are, or Lisa, if you are. So I'm gonna give you a quick kind of overview of what this is. So I think we all have heard of chakras. <clears throat> They're the energy centers that run in our body. So I'm just gonna briefly go over them. The one at the top of the head is the crown, typically the color of purple. And this represents our connection to source or to God, right? to intuition, to higher wisdom. <coughs> um, Tara says 100% right. It's totally not about you and all about them. Yes, Lisa says beautiful. So crown chakra at the top, all about connection to source. The one right in between our eyes is our third eye. That's connection to wisdom, um, and, you know, inner knowing, intuition. And this one, the throat chakra, which is actually getting a little bit tight for me right now. I'm gonna have to do some healing with my throat chakra stones and meditations today. Um, that is all about communication, right? Right below that is gonna be your heart chakra. Obviously, that one is green. Um, that's all about self-love, self-care, love for others, love for animals, plants, universe, everything. Below that is your power center. So right underneath your diaphragm, that is your power center. And that is all related to doing, like your masculine energy of doing and having self-confidence and having power. Um, that is where we, we really bring a lot of our self-worth from. Yes, it's in the heart chakra self-love, but that self-worth is, are we going to take those actions that's going to get us that outcome that we're looking for, right? Right below that, kind of like your belly, your sexual organs, you know, your womb, that is your sacral center. And that is your center for creativity, for sexuality, for owning your feminine, the fact that we can create anything. Um, Lisa says, I need more third eye, need more insight. That's great. You can work on that with this kit. And then finally, the last one is the root chakra. And the root chakra has to do with grounding, has to do with security. It might have to do with healing wounds from your past. I know a lot of my past had come from not feeling like I had enough money. And so therefore I was manifesting more, you know, growing up without money, I was manifesting more opportunities to feel like I don't have money. So I've really been focusing on grounding into my root chakra because another thing that I just learned through my Reiki healer and also good friend over at, if you guys are local, over at, um, I don't keep wanting to say pressed, oh, at Prima Elements, Adriana, is that I spend a lot of time manifesting, right? Manifesting is like creating things. And I spend a lot of time like in my imagination. So I spend a lot of time in my heart, in my throat, like these top chakras. So a lot of times what happens is we're never fully grounded. So I really need to spend time grounding, putting my toes on the earth, spending time in nature, just really sitting and being present, just doing nothing but just being. And so I've spent time grounding through meditation. I've noticed I've been able to draw things through me and bring them into form. So our manifestation mind up here thinks of it, but then to bring it into reality, into form, into physical form, it's got to come through those chakras the whole way down to the grounded chakra, the last one. Three is my favorite, feeling lucky. Tara, I love that. Um, okay, and then the, what you're getting here is crown chakra, clear quartz, which is spirituality, connection, universal love. 
third eye chakra is amethyst, which is my birthstone, which is my favorite. I have a big amethyst sitting right here. Um, the next one is throat chakra, which is so delight, communication, truth, honesty. The next one, heart chakra, rose quartz, self-love. And let me just tell you, when I was manifesting a new relationship, I put rose quartz everywhere. I put pink everywhere. That's when my hair was pink. And it truly helped me manifest a beautiful, amazing guy who gave me love, or received love. is amazing. Lisa says, need more implementation. Do a lot of thinking. Yeah, Lisa, so you might spend a lot of time up in your... Um, up in the top of your head, like thinking and, and not actually taking action and doing. So there's some things that we can work on throughout this process throughout this week. Uh, next one, solar plexus, yellow jasper. Personal power, wisdom, emotional control. And then sacral chakra is carnelian, creativity, passion, sexuality. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a coach out there. Her name is Kim Unami. And I'm just going to tell you this because I like to be open to all these different ideas energetically. And I don't know who I'm speaking to on this, but Kim Anami actually says that if you, are success, if you are sexually fulfilled, you will have more success in your business. And that's all that she teaches on. And that's really interesting. And the reason I say that is because maybe there's an area where you need to ask for you what you want or what you don't want. Or create a situation that's your ideal sexual situation. I know this is getting weird, but we don't want to overlook any area of our life that we could bring in more self-love. So I want you to think about all these areas and see where is that loop? Where is that thing that I need to take action on in this area, right? And then the last one is root chakra, red jasper. Ooh, I need to get a red jasper um, for myself since the grounding stone. That is security, grounding, and trust. So again, this is what it looks like chakra set. All right. So I'm so excited for this part. I think Tara is the only one that knows what's going to happen here. Cause again, I'm modeling Jen Scalia and she was great and she made it so fine. So here's what we're going to do in the comments. <clears throat> you are going to type in the word chakra. You can type it as many times as you want. As I keep talking, you're just continuing to type it in. So C H A C H A K-R-A, chakra. You're going to type it in the comments. The reason why is because as I keep talking here, I'm actually going to go through, swipe through the comments, and I'm going to randomly pick one person that's going to win the chakra set. Okay? So just start typing it in as many times as you want into the comments, and I'm going to wrap up this call. And then if you are not local, um, I will send it to you in the mail, so you'll need to message me your address as well. So recap on a couple of the things, the rules and regulations here at the end. Make sure that you are on the email list. Lisa, I'm not sure if you are. Tara, I'm not sure if you are because I haven't looked at it. So make sure you go back up, click on the self-love challenge, add yourself to the list. You're going to get a welcome email. Then you're also going to get a recap email with this homework in there. Just in case you forgot anything, that's going to help you moving forward, right? Um, in order to be eligible for the grand prize, you must watch the replay or you must watch live. That grand prize is going to be announced on Saturday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. One of those days. Um, and it will be valued at $500. Your homework for today is to begin a loop list and start crossing things off that loop list, right? Do one big thing, whether it's communication, whether it's cleaning, purging, whatever, starting that loop list. And then the other piece of your homework is recognizing what you do well and starting to share that either on, either on live video or elsewhere out into the world. Okay. Lisa says, on elliptical, can't type. That's amazing. Tara says, I'm total spiritual lover. She loves crystals, rocks. Lisa says, red is her favorite color. Yep, yep. Um, and then Tara said, replying to Lisa, yeah, that's super difficult for me too, says, um, overthinking. Yep. Need more implementation, implementation, do a lot of thinking. And a lot of thinking is mostly based on self-doubt. All right. So I'm not going to give away this prize until I see comments of chakra in there. I know that Lisa is on the elliptical, so she can't type. And Tara is the last one on here. So Tara, if you type in chakra before Lisa types in chakra, then it is yours. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. I'm watching it. I'm watching it. People on the replay, this is big news. This is big news.
there is a delay so I don't see it yet let me look on Facebook on my phone to see if it will pop up a little better for me it's pretty cool to watch yourself live while you're going live see it yet let me see on my phone to see if it oh dang Tara Lisa beat you yep okay so Lisa you actually win this I didn't expect this at all Lisa you won you won you won I need to stop I need okay it was weird hearing myself okay so Lisa is the winner of this one Lisa I'm gonna say awesome congrats Lisa is the winner. PM me your address. And the other thing, Lisa, make sure you're on that email. I don't remember if I saw it. So when you get down on that elliptical, make sure you're on the email. All right, guys, this was all for today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Let me just check the time. What am I going to do tomorrow? The 28th is a Tuesday. Let's go same place, same time, 530 tomorrow be on here live between now and tomorrow, do your homework and use the hashtag CK self love challenge. All right, guys, I will see you later. Bye.